Happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about disclosing absolute discharges. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Claudio Montesano was originally convicted and uh, sentenced for an assault against his domestic partner. He was granted an absolute discharge, which meant essentially that there was no sentence to serve and he wouldn't have a criminal record. According to Canadian law, an absolute discharge can only be disclosed with the prior written consent of the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness. Despite this, in the context of his criminal case, the judge was made aware of his prior absolute discharge after a document was handed up to the judge with a handwritten note indicating that he had previously received a discharge for a similar offense. He was being sentenced for a second domestic assault incident. As a result of that, he was given an elevated sentence beyond what a first offender would be given because of the prior conviction for a related offense. He argued, and was successful at the Supreme Court, that the disclosure of his absolute discharge violated his rights because it wasn't authorized by the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness. The Court of Appeal overturned that decision, restored his conviction, and the suspended sentence for 12 months. This case raises a very important issue, because what's the point of having a protection written into our law that this can't be disclosed if there's actually no consequence if it is in the course of a sentencing? How does it not render the entire sentencing process unfair and render the result of the sentencing hearing unjust if that is disclosed when it shouldn't have been and couldn't have been without the written consent of the minister? In these circumstances, it really takes the force out of the law for the law to have no consequences if it's broken. It's essentially words and no meaning. And that can't be what Parliament intended when it drafted a law that said if you get an absolute discharge, this isn't going to be disclosed in a future proceeding. In these circumstances, Mr. Montesano was, to some extent, treated unfairly, and the Supreme Court of Canada had the opportunity to right this wrong, not just in the way that affected him in his criminal case, but in a way that affects all Canadians who have discharges for related or any offences. If a person has had a previous discharge, it may preclude them from getting a second one. And the Supreme Court of Canada had the opportunity to clarify whether there is any consequence for a breach of this and whether a judge is appropriately entitled to consider it in sentencing if it is disclosed without the consent of the minister. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court of Canada, I think, didn't see the way that this could affect sentencing hearings taking place in courts every day across this country. That's the very type of issue of national importance that the Supreme Court of Canada is supposed to hear. It's unfortunate that it's going to take another case where somebody's information is improperly disclosed in the course of their, their, their trial or their sentencing hearing for this finally to become an issue that is dealt with by the Supreme Court of Canada. And unfortunately, people like Mr. Montesano have to suffer the consequences of that in the meantime. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada But Didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law. Please like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and thank you to Brazenville Creative for putting it together.